While B-movies don't exactly have the budget to hire big stars, they more than make up for it by delivering some crazy plot lines with whatever little they can work with. More often than not, these movies manage to captivate the audience's attention with their creative ideas and provocative scenes, thereby earning enough traction to ensure the film's success. The 80s were especially a prime era for B-movies, and certain actors gained stardom and became household names due to their work in these films, from Sybil Danning and Barbara Crampton to more popular names like Rutger Hauer and Peter Weller, we should explore the top 15 B-movie stars from the 80s and tell you all about them. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Yo, I'm Sybil Danning. And no man, no law, no war. Sybil Danny, famously known for acting in the 1980 cult classic Battle Beyond the Stars. Sybil Danny is inarguably one of the most well-known B-movie actresses of the 80s. She started her career as a cosmetician, but her beauty attracted the attention of several designers in the industry who offered her positions in fashion shows and photo layouts. Once she accepted these offers, Sybil tried her hand at acting and debuted in a German comedy film before doing a bold role in the erotic action film The Long Swift Sword of Siegfried. She she continued to do minor roles and establish herself as a sex symbol, and Sybil finally solidified her position as a B-movie actress after Battle of the Stars. In the following years, she appeared in movies such as Malibu Express, Chain Heat, Hercules, and Reform School Girls before taking a break after suffering from a spinal disc herniation on a movie set. In 2007, Sybil appeared in Rob Zombie's Halloween and a couple of other films before retiring from her acting career. While Sybil no longer acts in movies, fans remember her as a sexy, dynamic actress who ruled the world of B-movies in the 80s. Mr. Sterling? Yes? I'm Naomi. Caroline Monroe, starting her career as a model for Vogue at the young age of 17. Caroline Monroe shot to great heights of popularity after her roles in movies like Casino Royale and Where's Jack. Over the years, she won a role in the film A Talent for Loving, and she later did a 10-year gig as a poster girl for Lamb's Navy Rum. Caroline wished to try something new, so she signed a contract with Hammer Studios for a series of B-movie roles. She appeared in movies such as Dracula AD 1972, Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter, and The Golden Voyage of Sinbad, and continued to do such roles in films like Star Crash, Maniac, and slaughter high in the 80s. While Caroline Monroe's voluptuous body attracted a lot of fans and helped her become a household name, she sadly stopped doing risky roles after her marriage to her second husband, George Dugdale. Caroline then opted to work in horror films such as To Die For, Domestic Strangers, and Flesh for the Beast, and her most recent work was House of the Gorgon in 2019, where she appeared alongside her daughter, Georgina Dugdale. Monique Gabrielle, also known as Catherine Gonzalez. Monique shot to stardom after being selected as Penthouse Pet of the Month in 1982. She was offered roles in B-movies such as Bachelor Party and Death Stalker 2 and adult films such as Bad Girls 4, but her most impactful role was a two-line part in the comedy film Young Doctors in Love. Monique had a short career as a B-movie actress, and she retired in 2002 before getting married to Tony Angove. Angove was an adult film director and after marrying him, she decided to run a production company named Monique's Perfect Productions. Despite not having an extensive filmography, Monique's works in films such as Dream On, Hunter, Night Shift, Flashdance, and Young Lady Chatterley 2 made her a household name in the 80s. She played a brazen character that oozes sex appeal in Emmanuel 5 in 1987, and she was best known for such roles where she got down and dirty on screen without inhibitions. She later appeared in a tiny role in Hollywood's Scream Queen Hot Tub Party in 1991 where she made fun of her older roles in B-movies with a lot of grace, thereby winning more hearts. It won't hurt. I promise. <laughs> Barbara Crampton. After making a groundbreaking debut on Days of Our Lives in 1983, Barbara Crampton had one of the most successful careers among other B-listers. She later had a regular role as Leanne Love on The Young and the Restless, which helped her popularity and made her a household name in the 80s. Over the years, Barbara acted in B-movies such as Body Double, Chomping Mall, Castle Freak, and From Beyond. While she was a beautiful babe who did not shy away from nudity and, in fact, even appeared in a nude pictorial for Playboy, Barbara chose roles in horror films and anthologies. Her filmography is quite impressive, and she has established herself as one of the most iconic actresses in B-list horror films. After having thrived in her acting career, 
Barbara retired and settled down with Robert Blackman. She had two children with him, and she only returned to acting in the 2011 film, You're Next, after her kids were old enough. She has acted in and produced several horror films since then, and she currently lives a quiet life in San Francisco, while also producing films and playing short roles on shows such as Into the Dark and Creep Show. Nothing hidden. Alyssa Milano Alyssa Milano started her career as an actress at the young age of seven when her babysitter took her to an audition for a national tour of Annie. After getting the part, Alyssa embarked on a national tour and spent about 18 months on the road, and her talent caught the eyes of casting directors. She got offers for off-Broadway productions, such as Jane Eyre, as well as television ads, and her role in the 1984 sitcom Who's the Boss made her a household name in the 80s. She was barely 10 years old at the time, and her adorable portrayal of Tony Danza's daughter won over the audience's hearts. Alyssa made her film debut in 1984 in Old Enough, and the movie won a prize at the Sundance Film Festival. Alyssa's future looked quite bright, and she became a teen idol who acted in several movies such as Commando, The Canterville Ghost, Crash Course, and Dance Till Dawn. As she grew older, Alyssa opted for riskier roles and played a teenage prostitute in the film Where the Day Takes You, and her performance garnered a lot of praise and nods of approval from the audience and critics alike. She dabbled in several branches of the entertainment industry, ranging from television shows and commercials to off-Broadway productions, before finally trying her hand at B-movies. Alyssa hoped to get rid of her reputation as an adorable kid by signing up for erotic roles in movies such as Embrace of the Vampire, Deadly Sins, and Poison Ivy 2, Lily. And she has certainly had one of the most most blossoming careers among other B-movie stars of the 80s. In recent times, Alyssa has settled down with her husband, Dave Bugliari, and two children, and she is also well known for being vocal about political causes. Natasha Henstridge, best known for her debut role in the sci-fi horror flick, Species. Natasha Henstridge is a Canadian actress and model. She bagged a gig as a model for the French edition of Cosmopolitan quite early on in her career, and her stunning looks helped her reach new levels of fame within the fashion industry. In no time, Natasha was getting offers for television commercials for brands such as Olay and Old Spice, and she soon realized that she had more fun acting than modeling. Natasha decided to try her hand at acting and her first film, Species, took her to such great heights of stardom that she became a household name in no time. She later acted in Species 2 and 3, while simultaneously starring in B-movies such as Adrenaline, Fear the Rush, and Maximum Risk. Natasha gained a reputation as a femme fatale, and one can even say that she redefined what it meant to be a deadly, alluring woman on screen. Over the years, Natasha married Darius Campbell and settled with him in Los Angeles. She had two children with him, and she takes up a model gig here and there, but she has chiefly dedicated her time towards working for humanitarian causes. I'm going to kill them all, sir. Kurt Russell first appearing on the television show The Travels of Jamie McFeeders. Kurt Russell has been in the acting industry from the tender age of 12. It is also worth mentioning that Kurt had a baseball career just like his father, and he briefly played for the California Angels and the El Paso Sun Kings before retiring due to an injury. During this period, he had signed a 10-year contract with the Walt Disney Company, and he appeared in films like Now You See Him, Now You Don't, and The Strongest Man in the World. He earned a name as one of the top stars in the studio by the 1970s, and he later garnered a lot of praise for his ground groundbreaking role in Silkwood in 1983. He was known for working with John Carpenter and appearing in movies like Escape from New York, Escape from L.A., and The Thing. After doing several anti-hero roles, Kurt dabbled in mainstream movies and was nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award for portraying Elvis Presley in a limited series. Some of Kurt's best works from the 1980s were in films such as Used Cars, The Best of Times, Executive Decision, Overboard, and Tango and Cash, and he became a well-known name among the masses. His popularity helped him bag roles in mainstream cinema, and he has recently appeared in the Fast and Furious franchise and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Kurt most recently played the role of Santa Claus in The Christmas Chronicles, and he has settled down with his wife, Goldie Hawn, and two children in Vancouver. Peter Jason Known for his versatility and extensive filmography, Peter Jason needs no introduction to this list of actors who have become household names. First appearing in Howard Hawks' Rio Lobo in 1970, Jason never looked back and established himself as a passionate actor who respected his craft. He had fallen in love with acting after acting in a high school production of The Man Who Came to Dinner, and he pursued his education as a drama major in Pittsburgh. After his debut, Peter worked with Orson Welles on the other side of the wind, and he also acted in several movies for 
for Walter Hill. Some of Peter's most well-known roles were as a racist bartender in 48 Hours in 1982, a sinister government agent in Dreamscape, and a detective in Alien Nation. He also acted in Clint Eastwood's Heartbreak Ridge, and in a few of John Carpenter's films such as Prince of Darkness and They Live. Jason has one of the most versatile filmographies as a B-movie star, and he is also well known for guest appearing on shows like Desperate Housewives, The Golden Girls, Coach, and Hawaii Five-O. He has appeared in over a hundred plays and television commercials, and Jason also pursues carpentry as a hobby in his free time. Peter married Eileen Jason in 1979, and the two have been happily married for 34 years now. Julie Strain, crowned as the queen of B-movies. Julie Strain was known for her widespread appearances in over a hundred films. She was an impressive actress who did not shy away from risky roles, and she even preferred to do her own stunts in an attempt to deliver an authentic performance. Julie's most popular role was as Julie in the animated film Heavy Metal 2000, and she also gained popularity after being chosen as Penthouse's Pet of the Month in June 1991. After graduating from college, Julie decided to move to Hollywood. After she dabbled in modeling and voice acting before solidifying her position as one of the most sought-after B-movie actresses. Some of her best roles were in movies such as Double Impact, Love Bites, Enemy Gold, and Beverly Hills Cop 3, and she expressed her love for B-movies and stated that it felt like being crowned as prom queen with every new release. While Julie believed that her tall height made her seem unapproachable and intimidating, she was a gentle person who captivated everyone around her. She was married to Kevin Eastman for 12 years, and she had a child with him before divorcing him in 2007. Sadly, Julie passed away in 2021 after a long battle with dementia, but her legacy lives on in the form of her movie roles that are forever immortalized. Linnea Quigley Born in a regular family in Iowa, USA, Linnea Quigley was encouraged to try her hand at modeling and acting after she moved to Los Angeles in the late 70s. In no time, her efforts bore fruits, and she became an overnight star after a role in the cult classic B-movie, The Return of the Living Dead. Linnea soon became a household name, and she was offered roles in movies such as Wheeler, Night of the Demons, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, and Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bolorama. Linnea ruled as the queen of B-movies in the late 80s, and she later pinned down her experiences in two books, I'm Screaming As Fast As I Can and Bio and Chainsaw. After a successful stint as a B-movie superstar, Linnea moved to Florida to look after her parents and work as an animal rights advocate. While she does not shy away from the occasional movie role or appearing at horror conventions, Linnea has devoted most of her life to living a quiet life with her dogs. She has left a lasting legacy as America's Scream Queen and her filmography consists of over 125 films over a career of more than 35 years. Tom Atkins, best known for his role as Lieutenant Alex Deal in The Rockford Files in the late 70s. Tom Atkins is one of the most versatile actors in the horror and thriller genres. He has an extensive filmography that boasts of films such as The Fog, The Ninth Configuration, Lethal Weapon, Night of the Creeps, and Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, among other thrilling movies. Atkins has worked closely with big names such as Stephen King, John Carpenter, and Shane Black, and he has become a household name due to his innumerable acting roles as a police officer. In fact, his debut role was as a rookie police officer in the 1968 film The Detective, and he had such a good grasp over this role that he was cast to play several authority figures throughout his career. After conquering the world of B-movies, Atkins appeared in Broadway productions such as The Changing Room and Keep It in the Family before dabbling in several off-Broadway productions. Even today, Atkins does theater at the Pittsburgh Public Theater, and he has garnered a lot of praise for his role in the one-man show, The Chief. He is married to Janice Lee Rogers, and they also have a child together. Smart kid. Figure it out. Rutger Hauer. While Rutger Hauer is famously known for his works in movies such as Blade Runner, Flesh and Blood, The Hitcher, and Blind Fury, he started his acting career in a Dutch television series, Floris, and shot to fame after working in the 1973 hit Turkish Delight. After making his mark in Dutch cinema, Rutger started getting roles in American films such as Nighthawks and Blade Runner, which helped him become a household name in the 80s. After appearing in many hit films, Rutger moved to working in B-movies such as Split Second, The Beans of Egypt, Maine, Omega Doom, and so on. He was later cast in the 1992 horror comedy Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where he did a phenomenal job as the main antagonist, Lothos. Rutger was one of the most versatile actors of that era, and he tried his hand at British, Canadian, and American television series for the rest of his career. He is notably known for appearing in Fatherland, Merlin, Smallville, and Salem's Lot, and he also did certain mainstream roles in films such as Batman Begins, Dracula 3, Legacy, and so on. Rutger established an academy for thriving filmmakers, and he continued to do television commercials and voice acting gigs until he died in 2019.
Christopher Lambert. Christopher Lambert made a groundbreaking debut in Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes, in 1984, and immediately established himself as a household name. After such a successful start, there was no looking back for him, and he appeared in several films such as Subway, The Sicilian, and the Highlander series over the next few years. He later played the Thunder God, Raiden, in the movie adaptation of Mortal Kombat, and even tried his hand at martial arts in the 1995 film, The Hunted. Lambert also produced a few films over the late 90s, and one of the films, Don't Forget You're Going to Die, won numerous awards at international film festivals. Lambert also wrote a couple of books, and started a mineral water business and food processing processing plant. He also owns Coderon Wines, and he married twice in the late 80s and then again in the late 90s. RoboDoc, the creation of RoboCop, is coming soon and until then. Peter Weller. Peter Weller is a household name due to his role in RoboCop, and one might wonder how he landed on a list of B-movie stars. Well, as it turns out, RoboCop was not such a cult classic at the time it was released, and Peter Weller acted in several B-movies and paid his dues before achieving star status. Before RoboCop's release, Peter appeared in films such as First Born, and he later acted in movies such as The Adventures of Buckarai Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, Star Trek Into Darkness, and Mighty Aphrodite. Weller also guest starred in shows such as Lou Grant, Star Trek Enterprise, and Fringe. Weller has quite an extensive filmography, and he has also tried his hand at directing and voice acting. He has also had a tumultuous dating life, and he had an on-and-off relationship with Ali McGraw before finally settling down with his longtime girlfriend, Sherry Stowe, in 2006. Pam Greer Pam Greer was once described as cinema's first female action star by Quentin Tarantino, and she has most certainly lived up to this reputation. She first rose to stardom after movies such as Coffee, Foxy Brown, The Big Dollhouse, and Women in Cages. She later appeared in Tarantino's Jackie Brown and did a few roles in popular films such as Escape from L.A., Jawbreaker, Holy Smoke, and Larry Crown. Greer was said to be one of the best actresses of the time who had been robbed of an Academy Award nomination. However, awards and accolades are merely one form of validation and Pam has received a lot of love from the audiences that more than makes up for any trophy. Pam also worked in sitcoms such as The L Word and Bless This Mess, and she has also guest starred in television series such as Law & Order. Greer was known for picking up revolutionary roles, and even in her personal life, she is a role model to many women. Greer was diagnosed with cervical cancer in 1988, but she bravely fought through it and made a recovery. Marvelous Verdict. To sum it up, the 80s were a gift that kept giving when it came to producing some solid B-movies packed with action, entertainment, and steamy plotlines. These movies also paved the way for numerous actors, and some of them even reached great heights in mainstream Hollywood after the craze for B-movies increased. While we handpicked a few of the biggest B-movie stars in this video, there are uncountable others who have left a lasting impact with their performances, and let us know who among them caught your eye. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.